So my GTX 770 kind of died, so the only way to resurrect it from the dead is to throw it in the oven. Yeah, throw it in the oven. So I mean, it's already dead, so screw it. Let's get into it. Hey, what's up guys? My name is JD from JD Tech here, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we are resurrecting my GTX 770. At least I really, really hope so. We're gonna toss it in the oven and see what happens. But before we get into that, I'm gonna explain how it died. So basically what happened was I was benchmarking my GTX 770 and I was running Metro Last Light Redux and I was doing that benchmark. I put it at 1080p, high settings. I guess I was overestimating what it could actually do. So the screen went black, the fans went up at 100% and I was just stuck there saying, okay, why isn't anything happening so i had to force shut down my pc i restarted it and then i ran the benchmark again but this time 1080p medium settings and the same thing happened again so i forced shut down the pc again and then i restarted it and yeah that's when it died so what happened i don't know there's all these lines across the screen as you can probably see i have some b-roll up on there for you and i don't know what exactly happened so what we're going to do today is take the gpu apart break it down to its basic pcb and throw it in the oven. Yep, we're gonna throw it in the oven. The, the idea behind this is what at least I read is that potentially some of the soldering points get a little bit weak on you when you have the card for a while and you potentially just overrun it with a really strong benchmark or something like that. And what the oven fix does essentially is kind of recast some of those soldering points and potentially re-strengthen them so that you're not getting any shorts on your PCB or anything like that. I don't know if that's exactly what the cause is, but whatever is happening, I hope it works. <laughs> so let's move on over to the table and we're gonna break down the PCB and then we're gonna throw it in the oven. Okay, now we're switching over to the overhead cam and we are going to take apart this GPU. We have to remove the thermal paste from both the heat sink over here and over here. So let's get that out of the way here. Wow, that is really on there. I might have to montage through this. What the heck? That didn't like come off at all. So I was using the paper towel for a while and I was kind of worried it was going to get scratched. You know, for normal application, I think it's fine. Paper towels are fine. You're not going to be really too worried about scratching the dye surface. I switched over to a microfiber towel and nothing really changed. So what I'm going to try to do is use a blow dryer. If I had a heat gun, I'd be using that. And I'm going to try to heat up the thermal paste on here and try to soften it a bit and then be able to remove it. I don't know because it's really, really dried. Okay, I finally got this off. That was a pain. That was really, really dried on crusty, nasty old thermal paste. So if you happen to have a heat gun or a blow dryer at home, that can come in handy if you have to do something similar to this. So that worked out really nicely. Uh, it got really hot really quick, but uh, now we have both the dye on the PCB all nice and clean as well as the heat sink and the contact pipe so that's really nice now let's move on to the oven okay now we're moving on to the cooking section okay so we need our cookie sheet and we're going to need some aluminum foil your gpu some oil salt and bananas so we can make this a really good home cooked i mean uh revive this gpu so that's what we're going to do what we're going to have to do is take some of this aluminum foil crunch it up into some balls so that it gives a little platform for your GPU to sit on and boom, you throw it in the oven. So you preheat the oven to 375 and put it in for 10 minutes. So let's see how this goes. So right, before we get into that nonsense, we're gonna need some Chipotle oil for that Southwest charm, a ripe banana, lime, sriracha sauce for that Eastern kick, Himalayan pink salt, and peppercorn medley, just to make this GPU perfectly cooked. The 
GPU is officially in the oven and it is cooking alive. Oh, I love the smell of a freshly baked GPU. Look at that. Absolutely amazing. Okay, so now we gotta put on the heat sink and also the back plate. I think it's uh, cooled down enough now so that we can start assembling it back together and then we'll put it back into the PC. And we'll also reapply the thermal paste, which we'll be using the Noctua NTH1 thermal paste. So the only known problem I encountered while putting this in the oven, this just sounds so crazy to me. Anyways, uh, is some of the screw holes kind of melted on me. So um, yeah, I hope that's the only thing that melted. Okay, so everything is put back together. The card is fully intact now. I'll be very surprised if this actually works because um, I think the GPU oven fix is very specific when your GPU isn't working. Well, this technically did work. There was an image to the screen. You can still see the desktop. There was just lines all across of it. So that's the only problem. So, I mean, technically it's still kind of working, but let's see if it actually works and can perform without any hiccups now so i'll be very surprised if it does i don't know i just have my doubts but they said it's like nine times out of ten it does work so so the audio got a little messed up so i am dubbing it over so i power on the machine wait for the 4k monitor to boot up which it does take some time so i am eagerly waiting in anticipation for this to work is it gonna work is it gonna work? Uh, oh, come on. I was so close, but so far. Yeah, there's still lines on the screen. So, it's still functional, I guess. Well, not really. It still outputs an image to the monitor, so it kind of works. But the image is stuck like this. It's stuck in this extra wide format. The lines move around your cursor. It's a very bizarre and strange problem that I encountered, and I don't know what the fix is. So unfortunately, the GPU oven fix did not work this time around. I think I read a couple of things about some people leaving it even longer for like 20 minutes, but even at the 10 minute mark, some of those screw holes were already melting. So for 20 minutes, I don't think uh, that would have been a really good idea. So I don't know, I might, I might try it again, see what kind of suggestions you guys have in the comments down below. But honestly, I think, I think it's just dead. So hopefully after the mining craze dies down a little bit and maybe Ethereum switches to proof of stake, we'll have more GPUs out there on the market. I don't really care if it's used by mining or not. I'm gonna be testing all sorts of different cards on the used market to see what kind of conditions they're in. And I'm gonna try to get another GTX 770. And I'm gonna really try to get the ASUS GTX 770 because that was a really good card. Even with uh, two gigs of VRAM, it still held up with a lot of games, modern titles too, at 1080p, high resolution, even even at uh, even at ultra settings sometimes. So yeah, that was, that was a fairly decent performing card. So it, it sucks. Oh God, it sucks. So yeah, that pretty much sums that up. And if you guys have noticed yet, I've got my official first merchandise shirt. This shirt is actually really comfortable and uh, it says Tech Junkie on the back. Tech Junkie. So um, uh, I, I think I'm gonna start doing and selling some merchandise. Uh, this shirt is uh, one of those pieces in this color too and got the little JD Tech Gear logo. I don't know how good the print is. Um, I will have to benchmark it. And uh, as far as the material goes, it's really nice. It's actually really soft. And uh, yeah, it's pretty nice. And the Tech Junkie logo, or just branding from my channel alone, is not so much about the channel, but I feel like it's more about just embracing in technology and being a nerd. It's okay to be a nerd. Uh, people are always like, nerd, you like PCs. A nerd is just someone who's just really specialized or really interested in one particular area more so than others. So, I mean, at least that's what I define it with. So that's kind of what the Tech Junkie branding stands for, at least with me. I just want people to embrace being uh, a PC enthusiast, a tech enthusiast, whatever type of enthusiast that you are. 
you're a junkie for it. So yeah, that's what it's kind of about. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, came along with me for the ride. So thank you all for watching. I hope it was entertaining. I'm sorry it didn't work, but I couldn't get it to fix this time. So yeah, it happens. <laughs> Alright guys, thank you all for watching. If you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing and checking out the rest of the channel. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one.